Have you ever accidentally placed your floppy disks on your PC speakers because you did not pay attention, only to notice a few seconds later what a silly mistake this was? The mistake lies in the nature of how data is stored on floppy disks. Inside the plastic housing is a thin, round plastic disk coated in magnetic iron oxide, the floppy disk. By utilizing magnetic polarization, a floppy drive can write information to the disk. Speakers usually contain magnets which are used to create an opposing magnetic field in order to produce vibrations. Those vibrations are the sound we hear. Placing a floppy on a speaker may be the end of the data stored on the magnetic disk. But was it really that dangerous? Was the data in danger the moment you placed a floppy on top of your speakers? I am curious myself and got some magnets. Neodymium magnets to be precise. Those permanent magnets are quite strong and I will use them in today's video to find out if those magnets can destroy data on this floppy disk. The floppy disk uses a similar mechanism you may know from tapes. Audio tapes as well as VHS cassettes use a similar technique to store data. And although tapes can store a lot more data compared to floppy disks, they have a major disadvantage. Random file access. Imagine you want to access a file at the beginning of the tape and right after that a file that is located at the other end of the tape. You would have to wait until the cassette drive winds the tape to the other end. Having a read and write head on both sides of your diskette, a floppy drive is much faster accessing random bits of data across the entire disk. The drawback is the aforementioned limited capacity. I used 2M to format the disk to around 1.78 MB. That is enough space to store 7 pictures of AI generated fictional characters. The 7 pictures take up almost the entire space on the floppy disk, which I am going to expose to magnets using my self made testing setup. This cardboard box has a cutout where 6 of the magnets can be installed. Then, with varying distances, I will place the floppy disk below the magnets and leave it there for about 5 minutes. After that, I am going to test if all pictures can be opened with a DOS based picture viewer. This is mainly because 2M disks work much better on the DOS compared to Windows. If you want to know more about 2M and larger floppy disk formats, you can check out the dedicated video linked in the top right corner. For my first test, I am placing the floppy disk about 4 cm below the magnets. I do not expect any data corruption at this distance. Although the magnets are quite strong, I do not believe we will see any problems with the data at that distance. And about 5 minutes below the magnets, the disk seems to be operating without flaws. All images are opening in the picture viewer. I doubt that leaving the floppy disk below the magnets for a few hours will cause data to be corrupted. However, it could be that over an extended period of time, maybe, let's say over the weekend in the office, the data quality degrades causing the data to become unreadable. But today, I am interested in an immediate effect. For that, let's move the floppy disk closer to the magnets. 3 cm is the next distance. And again, after about 5 minutes, the disk is ready to be tested. Unsurprisingly, the disk behaves identical to the disk before. No issues with the speed of reading the data or the data integrity. All pictures open without issues. I will save you the time for the distance of 2cm since this had the exact same result as the previous tests. All data was pulled from the disk without problems. But at a distance of 1cm, the floppy disk definitely will experience the magnetic field from the neodymium magnets. But will it be enough to distort the data on the floppy disk? I did feel uncomfortable having magnets so close to a data disk. Leaving the disk near those magnets for an extended time should degrade the data stored on it. Unfortunately, I cannot provide an answer for how long the disk has to be exposed to the magnets at this distance to experience data loss, because as you can see, even at a distance of only 1cm for about 5 minutes, the data can be pulled from the disk without issues. In the next tests, the magnets will be physically touching the floppy disk. For sure, this should have an impact on the data stored on the magnetic disk, shouldn't it? But to my surprise, and maybe even surprising to you, the data is still intact. All images open without issues. Now I have my doubts that the magnets are strong enough to affect this floppy disk in the short time frame of 5 to 10 minutes. 
The only remaining test I can do is to place the magnets directly on the large flat surface of the floppy disk. If this disk still works, then I may need to increase the time the floppy is exposed to the magnetic field. After about 5 minutes, it is time to open the pictures stored on this disk. However, the moment I try to access the disk in the picture viewer, I get this error. The disk is no longer operational. At last. It looks like the magnets have done their job. Under DOS, the disk is also no longer accessible. Scandisk cannot help in this instance either. With an unhelpful error message, a user in need of the data stored on this floppy disk will be left alone with this problem. At this point, my only option is to reformat the disk, with the hope of bringing it back to a functional state. After another 2M format, the disk seems to be working again and I can copy the same images once more to the disk. So the magnets are able to destroy data on a floppy disk. And it is not only the data, it seems to also destroy the format of the disk. Sectors, clusters and tracks may all have vanished from the disk where the magnets touch the plastic housing. So far, I was only able to destroy the data and structure of a floppy disk, rendering it inaccessible. But wouldn't it be interesting if we could just damage a single picture, leaving the remaining data intact and operational? I will try to achieve this by placing the small end of the magnet on the floppy disk. For now, I will stay close to the center of the disk, where track 80 is located. That should make sure that the drive is able to read the disk from the outer tracks, including the important track 0, where all important details, like the file allocation table, are stored. And while I expose the disk quite a bit to the edge of the magnet, the data remains intact. I did notice that the magnetic field is a lot weaker at the edge of the magnets. So maybe it is not strong enough to scramble the magnetic structure on the disk. Let me repeat the test. But this time, I will move the magnet across the middle section of the floppy. At no time, I want to go over the edge of the floppy disk to ensure track 0 remains unharmed. But again, the disk seems to work without issues. All pictures open without any unexpected noise coming from the drive, indicating that there are no read errors or degraded data structures. In the center of the floppy disk is a round piece of metal, called the hub. It is used by the floppy drive to rotate the magnetic disk. I can place a magnet across it, having only a portion of the magnet directly above the data disk, which is still covered by the plastic housing. Maybe now the magnetic field is strong enough to affect the data on the disk. I left the magnet for a few minutes before carefully removing it, so I won't accidentally affect the outer tracks. Reading the disk is not an issue this time. Track 0 and the structure of the formatted disk seems to be in working condition. We can even open the first couple of pictures. Let me pull up the order in which the pictures have been copied to the disk. As you can see, we started with picture 7, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the last picture that was written was picture 6. If the drive starts writing data from the outer tracks to the disk, then the picture that is closest to the inner tracks is the last picture that was copied to the disk, picture 6, and it is the area where the magnet was placed. Then let's see what happens when we try to open picture 6. And it looks like the picture loads from the disk without issues. Just a bit more and we should see our fictional female explorer. But as we get closer to the end of the file, the floppy drive noticeably changes the sound, trying to reread the same sector over and over again. Until finally, the process fails. It looks like a part of the file was damaged by the magnet. This file cannot be opened by picture viewer, but maybe our good old friend, ScanDisk, may be able to help. Since the disk partially works, ScanDisk should be able to tell us a bit more about the problem we face with this disk. ScanDisk starts without issues and does its job testing the surface. When we get closer to the end of the disk, ScanDisk gets a lot slower. Instead of scanning multiple sectors at a time, it validates sector by sector. It looks like the structure on the floppy disk has degraded and is difficult for the drive to read. Scandisk can tell us what file is affected by this bad sector. It is our picture number 6. Finally, Scandisk reports a bad sector, which is now marked with a letter B. Rescanning the disk with Scandisk does not change anything. From this point forward, the bad sector is ignored and no longer read from or written to by the drive. Now I have a floppy disk with a bad sector. 
which is just a logical, not a physical fault. The last thing I want to do today is to get rid of any evidence that there ever was a bad sector recorded on this floppy disk. Moving over the entire disk with all magnets I have should erase any data and structures on the magnetic disk. Based on the results of previous tests, I assume this disk will no longer be accessible. And as expected, DOS cannot read the disk. Hopefully, 2M or any other format utility should be able to recreate tracks, sectors and clusters on the disk. While DOS was not able to access the disk, 2M formats the disk without complaints. And after a couple of minutes, we have a freshly formatted floppy disk. Another round of scan disk assures us that the bad sector has vanished. The disk is again fully operational and ready to accept fresh data. Hopefully this time, far away from magnets and their magnetic fields. To conclude today's experiments, we have seen that magnets will affect floppy disks and the data stored on them. While it was a lot harder than I initially anticipated, damaging data stored on floppy disks is indeed possible using magnets. Leaving a floppy disk close to magnets will eventually render it inoperable, which is fixable by reformatting the disk, however the data once stored on it will be gone forever. And with this, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed today's experiments with floppy disks. If you did, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel so you get notified whenever I upload new content. A special thanks to all my Patreons for their continued support. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.